Hey guys, all the way with Alloway here with Stuart Blumberg, the writer and director of Things for Sharing. So the film is about sex addicts and they go to these meetings, Things for Sharing, hence. Um, so did you actually go to these meetings like incognito or did you go and were open about the project? No, I mean, I mostly just went to a lot of meetings and listened. Okay. You know, you don't have to talk if you don't want mm -hmm. to. Um, it's not like a round robin. So I basically right. just would, uh, I got a list of the meetings and just went. Mm -hmm. Just sat and observed. Can you say like a crazy story that you heard? Like anything that influenced uh, the writing of the script? I mean, I heard some really funny stories. I heard some really tragic stories. You know, guys talking about getting thrown out of the house, living in their cars, not being able to see their kids. I, you know, heard stories of interesting ways of how people tried to deal with temptation, literally mm -hmm. like just wearing blinders, walking down the street and things like that. So you hear a lot of things. The challenge is to figure out, okay, what do you want to take and actually use in yeah. your movie. Well, I love that the idea started with your co-writer Matt Winston going, you know, there's all these Hollywood sex scandals and people that are open about sexual addi addiction and it's sort of glamorized. And um, how did you guys go about saying, you know, I'm going to make a script that kind of breaks free of those stereotypes and makes people think about this in a different way? Well, I think it just very simply, we just told stories about regular people. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have like the famous actor or the famous whatever getting busted we showed you know I thought Mark Ruffalo's character was based on Russell Brand oh no, yeah just kidding <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no, it was just based on Mark no um <laughs> no uh yeah everyone was playing regular people and mm -hmm. you know most people who are in 12-step meetings are not famous so mm -hmm. we just wanted to show it that way and we just wanted to show you know people who you wouldn't normally suspect you know just like right. A, a doctor, a contractor, an mm -hmm. environmental consultant, you know, people from all walks of life right. going through the struggle. Well, that's what I, I do love is going well. Each I think anyone watching the film can find a character that they relate to, um, and they're all very specific. So tell me about the root of where each of these people began for you and how you kind of cultivated them from there. Right. Well, we wanted to show people at different stages of recovery. Um, so we have Tim Robbins, who's sort of the elder statesman of the 12-step group. Mm -hmm who's been in AA for about 20 years and he's been in this program for 10 and um, he sort of has, he knows the ropes mm -hmm. and he's married, he has a family, so he's at a different juncture. Then there's Mark Ruffalo who's single, who hasn't dated since he's gotten into recovery, who's been quote unquote sexually sober for five years, who's got to figure out like how do I have a relationship now? And he's got a certain amount of time, but it's sort of just been like kind of white knuckling it. Then you have Josh Gad, who plays his character Neil, who's just <laughs> come into the program because he's been court ordered to because of mm -hmm. the stuff he's done on the outside. He's not taking it seriously. He doesn't think it's real. And then something happens and he has to really take it seriously. So we wanted to show people at different stages and we wanted to show the fact that no matter what stage you are in of the process, you know, you have to keep working it. Mm -hmm. Well, you've worked with such amazing actors, you know, Annette Bening, Julianne Moore, Ruffalo, Gwyneth Paltrow, um, and then you have a newbie in this cast, um, Pink. Yeah. <laughs> um, so tell me about how you guys actually wrote the part for her. Yeah. What was the process like working with her as opposed to, you know, people who've been in film forever? Well, it was just cool because it's pink. Yeah. And you're like, oh my god. I wore pink thing. because I knew we were going to talk about pink. No, yeah. I didn't. But um, it works. <laughs> no, I mean, what was amazing is she's she's a professional. And she's a worker. You know, so you sometimes forget she just shows up and you, and she knows her stuff and she's just really sweet and fun. She brought cupcakes on her last day of shooting Love for it. everyone in the crew <laughs> that she had made. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was just great. I mean, she, yeah, it was her first time and sometimes needed you know, just a little guidance, but for the most part, she was a natural, and she brought a humor and a truth that mm -hmm. I was hoping she would bring, and she really did. Yeah, and then Mark Ruffalo, I can't help but notice that he kind of plays these slippery characters. So what about Mark um, is castable in that kind of role? Mark is great at the shadows, you know, he's... I hear Josh Gad outside. <laughs> um, he... He's so likable, and I think people inherently, in some way, trust him that you can push the other direction and people are going to mm -hmm. go with it. I think in this one, he's more kind of closed down, and kids are alright, he's just sort of more loosey goosey and freewheeling. Mm -hmm. But he has an emotional truth that people just believe. Yeah. And so, if you give him something that a real human would do, he'll just nail it. No, I do love that the film kind of explores how relationships are affected by people giving into their own private temptations. So why is that a subject that you as a writer tend to write about, and will you continue writing about this? 
Um, I mean, maybe because I'm human and I have my own temptations and I'm always fascinated by the beautiful weirdness of human nature. Um, I just love questions of how we navigate life and how we try to be quote unquote good people when sometimes we don't want to be. And, um, I think, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if other films that I do tackle this kind of thing from a different, Mm -hmm. you know, And, and since you're making a film, you know, making a film about temptations is always tricky and there's always, you know, it's controversial. So with this film in particular, you guys have done the festival circuit. Have you run into anyone who finds it controversial or who doesn't agree with it? I mean, it's, it's yeah. a touchy subject. So yeah, there, I mean, I think there are people who will, um, you know, maybe feel like, uh, that was an interesting movie, but I don't believe your very premise that this is a real problem. Mm-hmm. Um, there might be people who take issue with the way characters actually behave in it, mm-hmm. the choices they make. Yeah, it's not going to appeal to everyone, but I think for the most part, people have responded to the fact that this is a movie that seems to tell the truth. Mm-hmm. I think if you're not, even if you're not suffering from sexual addiction, everyone, like you said, has their own private sort of demons that they deal with, and in very similar ways to all of the characters. Um, so I'm curious about your production company, Classified you, Film. Classified Film, yeah. um, with Edward Norton, yeah. that you guys went to Yale together. So yeah. tell me about, because um, I think it's really cool as a writer and director to kind of have your own production company where you can be making and choosing your own material. Right. So tell me about. Well, that just sort of started, um, I'd say about ten years ago. Um, Edward and I had worked on this movie, Keeping the Faith, that I wrote and we produced and he directed and starred in. Ben Stiller. Exactly. (laughs) And we thought, you know, wouldn't it be great just to have something more formal for the stuff that we all wanted to Mm do? And so, you know, it's kind of a very nimble, small organization, but we do things every once in a while that we all believe in. And it's Mm -hmm. really fun to work with friends. That's the greatest thing. Mm -hmm. And do you guys, are you like-minded about what kind of material you're looking for? Is there anything coming up that... Yeah, I mean, um, there's something that I might write and direct that he might be a part of. Um, yeah, we're always sort of looking for things. And like, I mean, we do we we produced a, a documentary about the election of Barack Obama because it was something yeah. that we all believed in, and our friend mm-hmm. had this idea, and we supported it. So That's it's cool. really just about supporting each other's visions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so up next. Up next, uh, I just finished the uh, first draft of a script about pizza and Zen Buddhism in the New Mexico desert uh, with what? mobsters and hitmen. It sounds very odd, but it, I think it works. So that I'm going to try to direct next. Do you have any um, actors attached? Not yet, but I'm about to start doing that process. Do you want to continue writing and directing your own material? I would like to, yeah. Yeah. I love it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank Check you. Check out Thanks for Sharing.